Okay, so today I'm going to continue talking about hyperplane arrangements, but first let me try to correct my mistake from last time because that was that was embarrassing. So I want to discuss how to in what sense is a zonotope dual to a hyperplane arrangement. So so uh, you have a vector configuration. V1, et cetera, and Vn. And then the corresponding hyperplane arrangement is you just take the corresponding orthogonal hyperplane. V1 up to the herb M. And yeah, so, somehow I want to say that the zonotope is dual to the arrangement. And yeah, to, to make this precise, I have to not talk about the intersectional lattice, but instead I want to talk about the normal, uh, the normal fence. So uh, first of all, for any polytope, I'm going to define a normal fence right now. I should have done this in the first few lectures, but I actually uh, didn't do this, so let me do it now. First of all, a polyhedral cone. is an intersection of a bunch of half space, which uh, all contain, like the hyperplanes have to contain the origin. Has of the form, you take all x in Rg uh, such that some dot products have to be non negative for u1 for i from 1 up to, uh, yeah, for some, some u1 all the way up to u m in rd. And yeah, the, so the picture you should think of is like this. Here's the origin, and then you have, you take some hyperplane through the origin, and then you choose some region. That's a polyhedral column. And a polyhedral fan is uh, denoted fancy F is a collection of polyhedral cones uh, set of polyhedral cones such that two conditions are true. First of all, the face of any cone so it's very similar to what we had before for like for triangulations and zone double tongues. First of all, if you have a polyhedral cone, then all of its faces, all faces of C belong to F. And the second condition is the proper intersection. If you have two different cones, C and C prime. In your fan, then their intersection is their common face. So maybe an example here would be maybe I have two cones like this, and they so if I take these two cones, then I also have to take all the rays and this vertex. So I'm taking all faces of each cone. That's my that's my fan. So it's sort of, uh, I could instead think of the relative interior of each cone, right? So I would have some decomposition to open like interior of this triangle, of this triangular region and of this triangular region and, and these three open rays and this vertex here. All right. How do I associate a fan to a polytope? Definition. Let's say you have a polytope in Rd. Uh, what I want to do is I want to define the normal fan as the normal fan. And by definition, it's the collection of cones of the form 
n sub f, where f is a space of p. So there's going to be as many cones as there are spaces of my polytope, and each so each where, where each n of n sub f is the following thing. You take sort of all axes in R D such that so each such vector defines a linear function on my polytope. And I want that linear fun function to be maximized at this space. Then x belongs to n sub f. So uh, uh, more precisely, yeah, so f is a subset of the set of, mm, yeah, maybe I should say this is y. Subset of the set of x, x and p, such that the dot product with y is maximized over z and p of z comma y. All right. So what what do what what are you supposed to see in the picture? Let me draw a picture. Let's say p p is a pentagon like this. This is P. And the way this works is you, you look at each vertex and you to draw the normal fan, what I do, like what is the n sub f where f is this vertex here? Well, the I claim that it's a cone which looks like this. So if my vector points anywhere from here to here, uh, vector y points anywhere from here to here, then it's maximized at this vertex. Maybe possibly including some of its adjacent faces. So I can keep going, and every time I'm going to draw, these are going to be orthogonal. Yeah, yeah. So th this this part here is, I guess, f of y of of p. That's a good point. Yes, yeah, so in particular, the the relative interior of this guy is going to be the set of points where f is actually equal to f. Of so I'm kind of I'm identifying points if they give you if I'm identifying the y's which give me the same f of into inside of each relative interior. So uh, anyway, the picture here, uh, I'm going to have five top dimensional cones corresponding to my five vertices. And then I'm, I'm just kind of going to bring all of them together, move all these points into the order. Picture is going to be. have five one dimensional cones. And then I have five two dimensional. Okay, this is the this red picture is the normal fan of my polytope. Any questions so far? This, by the way, is what is called a complete fan. The union of all cones is the whole whole argument. Every, every y, uh, sir. Yeah, yeah. So in general, arbitrary fans need not be complete. Like this is fine, but the normal fan of every polytope is a complete fan. Okay. Now, uh, what is what is another natural way to get a fan? Which, by the way, this. This is related to the dual polytope of P in some in some way. You you may want to think about how is we studied dual polytopes and somehow there is there is a dual polytope of P somewhere. I'm not gonna talk about this right now. 
Anyways, uh, another way to get a cone is you take a central hyperplane arrangement. A central hyperplane arrangement. Maybe I have something like this. A bunch of hyperplanes. I'm going to assume that all pass through the origin. Then I also get a fan by just looking at the regions and their closures. Uh, hyperplane arrangement A. Yeah, it gives me another cone by the fan. A gives a fan f of A, which, yeah, so you just take closures of regions and their faces. So you take the closure of each region, it's going to be like a polyhedral cone, and then you take all the faces, so you get a fan. Just, yeah, just in the most obvious definition here. The, the hyperplanes subdivide the space into these polyhedral cones. So what's the, what is now the relation between, uh, the relation between the two, the two pictures? So yeah, wait, okay, so let me, this is, if this is A, then F of A is going to, This is f of a. And in particular, what I want to say is that if I take the normal vectors to my hyperplane arrangement, here is one normal vector. For each hyperplane, I choose one normal vector. The complex. And then I take the corresponding zone at top. Okay. Corresponding zone top is gonna look like this is V1, V2, and V3, and this is Z sub V. And then I take the zone top and I take the normal fan. The zone top. Normal fan is gonna. Okay, so we're going to have six cones. And the claim is that you get the exact same normal fan. You get the exact same fan from the two constructions. Hmm. Position. If you have A, H1, H M, central arrangement of hyperplanes, central arrangement of hyperplanes, and V, this V1, that's right, Vm, the I is the orthogonal complement of H in some, some choice. These are the normal vectors. Then the claim is that the uh, normal fan of the zonotope coincides with, with the fan associated to the hyperplane arrangement. Right? And how would you prove this?
Thank you. Yeah, I think I think I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So so this actually that works in two dimensions, obviously, but also in hard dimensions there's some argument. Yeah. Let let me write down so what uh what what you guys said basically yeah if you if you take y some vector and then you so which element of the normal fan of the zone top it belongs to well you have to that depends on what is f sub y of the of the zone top right we're just basically the whole the cone depends on what is f sub y and what is f sub y it's so this guy is a minkowski sum of line segments so here we're going to get a Minkowski sum of, for each line segment, you either take zero, or you take the whole line segment, or you take the, the other endpoint. This is if the dot product is negative. This is if the dot product is zero. This is if the dot product is positive. And right, so that's just basically this data determines so the dot product of y with each vi determine which space it gives here, and therefore which cone inside of this fan it belongs to. And on the other hand, so the same data for the hyperplane arrangement. If you want to find the region that your vector belongs to, basically you need to see on which side of which hyperplane you lie. And that's exactly the same as, comp as computing the dot product with each normal vector. Same data. Data has to determine um, which cone of determines the the cone of f of a that y belongs to. That's the that's the claim. And so in particular, the phase poset of this polyhedral fan is sort of is the same or dual to the phase poset of the zone of those. And in particular, the cool consequence for us is that corollary. Is that if you want to compute the number of vertices of a zone top, this is an arbitrary zone top, but almost arbitrary, then it's just the same thing as computing the number of regions of the corresponding hyperplane arrangement. And so when I teach you how to compute regions of central arrangements, basically, that's the same as commission number of vertices of zone top. And remember, so we had some interesting results about number of vertices of zone top of tangs. That's different. I'm, I'm also going to talk about that. But for now, so these are only the vertices of the zone top of tang, which are on the outside of it. All right, anyways. That's the connection that I wanted to make. And yeah, any questions on this stuff? All right. Uh, say it again. Uh, yeah, so you wanna you want bounded regions to correspond to some. Yeah, in some cases, yeah. I'm I'm gonna talk about generic arrangements, and then there's gonna be bounded regions that are gonna correspond to sort of interior vertices of zone double time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is central, and uh, here I'm also assuming that for the vectors. Each vi is non-zero, and each vi is not proportional to uj. So that corresponds to work. Yeah. All right. So going back to going back to hyperplane arrangements, let me remind you the notion of the intersection poset. So a is an arbitrary hyperplane arrangement in R to the D. 
And then uh, the intersection power set is the power set of uh, intersection of hyperplanes in A. Uh, ordered by reverse inclusion. And uh, in particular, let me, so last time I got some questions about, uh, questions basically, for polytopes we have the phase power set, and basically that phase power set determines the whole combinatorics of a polytope. This reminds how your polytope actually looks combinatorially. So let me explain how, just briefly mention why this is not the case for hyperplane arrangements. So this captures some combinatorial data, but not all combinatorial data. In particular, uh, uh, if I draw these two hyperplane arrangements, Maybe this is A1 and this is A2. And I claim that these two have the same intersection plotted, or is this intersection power set plot. L of A is isomorphic, A1 is isomorphic to L of A2. You see that, hmm? Right. Uh, Right, but, but but this uh, yeah. So this power set is not talking about errors. It's talking about intersection. All right, so there is, here there's five intersection points. Here there's also five, and you can there's a bijection between like one corresponds to one, two and three corresponds to two and three. There's a bijection between hyperplanes here and hyperplanes here, which preserves all intersections of any subset of them. Actually, two and three should be swapped here. Yeah, so in particular, the actual way it looks, the hyperplane arrangement looks, is not determined. But somehow notice that here there are two bounded regions, and here there are two bounded regions. Here there is one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. There is uh, the bounded regions are the same, and the regions two. The number of total regions is 10 plus k. Somehow, even though this power set captures only partial, partial information about the arrangement, the miracle is that the number of regions can be computed purely in terms of the power set. How do you, how do, you do that? Um, well, I mean, it depends on your notion of combinatorial equivalence. So you're saying maybe, no, but I mean, like, if you look at the set of bounded regions, right? So let's take all bounded regions, take the closure. Here it's a, it's a, it's homeomorphic to a ball, and here it's not. So, I mean, of course, bounded regions, if you, if you look at them in the projective space, then everything is bounded. But actually, Yeah, I, I mean, so first of all, you can talk about, you can projectivize a, an arrangement only if all hyperplanes pass through the origin. But still you can, there is a procedure where you have some, th these are not central, but you can you can put them in one dimension up and you, take, you can take the cones over them and they, they are gonna, there's a way to make every hyperplane arrangement that's not central into a central one by increasing dimension by one. And Oh yeah, so so uh, basically the phase process of the of the fan would capture all all the data. So I guess that that would be a more natural analog of the phase process of a polytope. 
but but then somehow we're going to work with this one because it's uh, it's still it's very useful to compute the number of regions. Say, say it again. If it's not central, you have to make it central by increasing the dimension. But but actually. Yeah, this post-it works fine for non-central hyperplane arrangements as well. It's, it's, it's a meaningful object for, for these. Any other questions? All right, so how do I compute? the number of regions. And that's actually, so let me start this new subject. It's called the characteristic polynomial. Of a hyperplane arrangement. So, uh, and it's gonna, it's gonna tell you the number of regions and the number of bounded regions at the same time. So first of all, here's the definition. Suppose you have a finite post set. C is a finite post set, uh, which has a minimum. Has a unique minimal element. Then I want to define the nervous function. Which uh, is denoted by mu. It associates an integer to every element of P is the nervous function is computed recursively. It's defined rec recursively or by the following two conditions. Mu of the minimal element is one, and then for any for any uh, for any non-zero, non for any non-minimal element y, the condition is that the sum over x less than or equal to y mu of x is zero. That sounds like a, I mean, if, you, if you've seen nervous functions in number theory before, this is the complete analog. If you, how many people have seen nervous function or integers? One, two, three, okay. Yeah, so if you take the power set of integers ordered by which ones divide which ones, then this, this definition specializes to the nervous function of that. Uh, so here I'm not assuming that P is a lattice. So this definition makes sense, uh, yeah. So why, why, does, why does this define why is this a well-defined function? Uh, index on the size of p. Right, yeah, actually, yeah, so you can sort of proceed from the bottom up. Right? You can you can look at this equation here, and then you can rewrite it as, as an equivalent to mu of y is negative sum of the rest of the things in this sum over x strictly less than y mu of x. So yeah, you can compute for each once you have computed all elements below y, you can compute y. Okay, so let's do some examples. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, I'm assuming finite. Yeah. I mean, it could be infinite, but it has to be, it has to be locally finite. For any y, there should be finitely many elements below y. But yeah, in this class, I, I don't think I'm gonna do infinite both sets ever. All right, so examples. Let's say I have, so I'm going to consider 
intersection process of hyperplane arrangements. So maybe if my arrangement looks like this, then the corresponding intersection process that I did in, in class last time looks something like this. Right, there are three hyperplanes and there are two intersection points. So what is the nervous function for that? Which value goes here? One. Okay. What about here? Negative one. What about here? One. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, that's correct. If I do some other example, maybe an arrangement that looks like this. Mm. Then I have what I have. I have the whole space. I have the whole space, and then I have three hyperplanes, and then they all intersect at one point. Hmm? What, what is this? They still have one, uh, okay, one in the bottom. And then here, negative one, negative one, negative one, here. All right, very nice. Okay, so, uh, um, I guess I'm, oh, all right, yeah, let me do one more. Let, let me actually now give a definition. There's a definition, uh, the characteristic polynomial. So you have any hyperplane arrangement A, the characteristic polynomial of A of C, the characteristic polynomial of A is given by, what you do is you take the sum over all elements of the intersection lattice, of the nervous function of x times e to the dimension of x. So each x is an intersection of a bunch of hyperplanes. So it's an affine space of some dimension. That dimension is the power of is the point of t in the sum. For example, here the dimension is it goes from it decreases from bottom to the top. So what's the characteristic polynomial in this case? Two minus three t plus t squared. Okay. What about here? Oh, it's the same thing. Interesting. In indeed, that's interesting. Actually, sort of. Okay, so the dimension is zero, one, and two. So, uh, and t squared minus three t plus two. For some reason, these are the same. In general, for arbitrary hyperplane arrangements, these are not going to always be the same. So, yeah, that's the characteristic polynomial. And let's do one more example. Let's say I have the coordinate arrangement x1 equals to 0, etc. xn equals to 0. What is the intersection pole set that coordinate arrangement? Did you say louder? Okay, I have one element and then it splits into n many, and then what happens? Oh, you think it's. A, yeah, actually, I don't think it's. So let, let, let me try. Draw the coordinate arrangement. Okay. 
right, it's just the, it's yeah, what is called the Boolean algebra. L of A is the Boolean algebra, which means that of all subsets of brackets n ordered by inclusion. So basically, any set of hyperplanes has an intersection of the of predictable dimension. Yeah, so L of A looks something like this. Empty set, and there's one, two, three, all the way up to N. And one, two, two, three, two, one, three, and two, three. One, two, three. All right. So how do I compute the Mobius function? Well, let's let's see. Here it's one. What about here? Negative one. What about here? One. What about here? Negative one. Interesting. Uh, So the claim is that for the Boolean algebra, the Boolean algebra, so every element of the pole set is a set, then the nervous function is just negative one to the number of elements in there. And the and the proof is basically. What is the proof? Induction. Uh, okay. How do we prove it by induction? Okay. Okay. I see. So you're saying if I if I take any element in the Boolean algebra, then the interval below it is basically a smaller Boolean algebra. Okay, and then, but then, okay. So let's say I know. Let's say I know all the Mobius function right, by by induction. I can compute all the Mobius, all Mobius function up to the top element. So how do I check that the top element is plus or minus one? Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I just use the definition, and uh, yeah, basically the proof is the is that the sum for k equals from zero to n, and choose k times negative one to the k is zero because this is the same as one minus one to the n, the binomial theorem, and that is precisely the computation that goes into computing the nervous function of the Boolean lattice. Very nice. Okay, in particular, what is the characteristic polynomial? One minus t. Actually, is it? Uh, so, so the dimension is maximal here. So the dimension is reversed, and and the actual answer is t minus one to the n. The characteristic polynomial of the coordinate arrangement is t minus 1 to the n. Pretty cool. OK, so uh, now, what is the number of regions? The number of regions of the coordinate arrangement is what? Uh, no, but I mean, it, it should be a number, right? So if we just take n coordinate, have, hmm? Say again? Yeah, yeah, for this particular coordinate arrangement. 
to the end. Okay, interesting. What's number of bounded regions? Zero. Now oh, this should be related to two to the n and to zero. That is a theorem due to the Plasky. In 1975, so if you have any arrangement, hyperplane arrangement, not necessarily coordinate, the coordinate one, but arbitrary, uh, then the claims are number of regions is plus or minus the characteristic polynomial at negative one, negative one to the g. Let's assume that a is in size r to the g and the second claim is that the number of bounded regions is also some sign negative one to the rank a times the characteristic polynomial evaluated at one which yeah so I think this is a, a super beautiful result. And yeah, let's, let's check, let's see. Uh, so we have this characteristic polynomial here. If I plug in negative one, I get six. One, two, three, four, five, six regions. Okay. If I plug in one, I get zero. All right. Here, if I plug in, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Same polynomial. So it works for all hyperplane arrangement. In particular, the that answers the question I mentioned before, which is if you only know the if you only know the intersection lattice of your arrangement, how do you find the number of regions? Well there you go. Corollary uh, L of A determines the number of regions and the number of bounded regions. So how do I how do I prove this? I'm not actually gonna prove this, but in, in principle how would you I'm I'm gonna give you some proof idea. And the proof idea is again using deletion contraction recurrence. And so here's the definition of deletion contraction for hyperplane arrangement. Let's say you have a hyperplane arrangement. Let's say it goes from H0, H1, and then all the way up to H sub M inside R to the G. And then uh, I want to I define two new hyperplane arrangements. I want to either delete H0 or I want to contract H0. So deletion. is defined as you just is denoted a minus h zero you just remove the corresponding hyperplane and contraction is a bit more interesting what you do is you consider all basically intersect you restrict to h zero H0 itself is a linear fine space, so you uh, contraction denoted by A contract zero slash here. Uh, it's just the set of all intersections, which I intersect H0, set of all non empty intersections like this. Where, uh, from one up to M. I'm assuming that these are all different hyperplanes. Some of them could be parallel, then I'm ignoring that the intersection is empty, but otherwise, uh, which I said the intersection is not empty. And this is a hyperplane arrangement. Hyperplane arrangement 
side h0, which is same, it's isomorphic to r sub z minus. Let's try an example. Example, let's say I have a picture, looks like this, and let's say this is H0, this is A. Then what is A minus H0? Same picture without H0. All right. What is A contracts H0? Two points on a line. Right. Which is very interesting because here it looks like there should be some multiplicity. But actually, I'm ignoring. So this is here, I'm ignoring nor multiplicity. But yeah, we should, we should remember this part because here, uh, this is sort of unnatural. It would be, in some sense, it would be more natural to include to remember this point with multiplicity too. But for now, yeah, let, let's let's ignore this, and it, the, the whole construction still still works, so there's no reason to complain. Okay, so let's say let me now prove a or let me now state a lemma. Suppose you have a hyperplane arrangement with a hyperplane H. You choose some hyperplane inside the hyperplane arrangement. Then there is going to be three claims. First claim is that the characteristic polynomial of A satisfies the deletion contraction of I of A minus H zero of C minus I of A contracts H zero. The claim is you can always compute the characteristic polynomial by deletion control. It's a very explicit algorithm. You don't have to compute all the Möbius functions, but, but you, uh, it's not clear which one of them is more effective, but there, this is the second algorithm you can use. So the second claim is that the number of regions of A is the number of regions of A minus H0 plus the number of regions of A contracts H0. So let's see. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here are 6, 10. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. R is 7. And here R is 3. It works. Hmm? Right, okay, so the second part actually follows from the first part. If you plug in, uh, actually, it's, it's a little bit unclear, right? Say it again. Yeah, so this lemma actually implies, yeah, let, let me write it down. This lemma, this lemma implies the Slavsky. Theorem. So yeah, I'm trying to sort um, the way you could show that that theorem is true is you can show that the left hand side and the right hand side satisfy the same recurrence relation. That's a pretty powerful idea. And so yeah, let me just mention what happens to the bounded regions. The bounded regions, it's a bit well, it works in this case. There's two bounded regions here, and then there is one and one over there. But in principle, something could go, could go wrong. So uh, the number of bounded regions is either the sum of the two, A minus H0, plus the number of bounded regions of A contracts H0, or it is zero. So when is it non-zero? It's non-zero if the, happens if the rank a is equal to the rank of A minus H0. 
when you remove h0, the rank may drop by one. Remember, the rank is the dimension of the span of normal vectors. Zero if a the rank a minus zero plus one. I'm out of time, so I'm going to continue next time. If you have any questions, let me know.